Hey, what's up everyone and welcome to another After Effects tutorial. Today we're going to be going over how to rig and animate a character um, in After Effects. So you're going to need a plugin called Duik, D-O-I-K, and you can go to Duduf, that's D-U-D-U-F, dot net to download it. And I'll put a link in the description for that as well as this project file um, so you can go along with it. Now this is a guy I drew in After Effects pretty quickly. Um, he's pretty sloppy, um, but I'm not going to go over how to draw a character. I'm just going to go over um, how to rig them because uh, drawing is based upon how you can draw and things like that. So first I'm going to go through the different pieces we have. We have a head, we have a body, pelvis, pieces of the arm, or the leg, left thigh, left calf, left foot, and the pieces of the arm, left upper arm, left forearm, left hand. Um, and that's how Dudev kind of needs to be in order to rig them. So let's jump into the head here and I'll show you kind of what we got. We've got a paper texture that I have uh, downloaded off Google and uh, that's giving it this texture over top of him. And inside the head comp we have um, two eyebrows that you can't actually see because his cap's covering it. But there they are. I'll just leave them down there so he looks a little worried. We have his cap, and we have his um, eyes that are track matted, have a track track mat so they can move up and down. And we have a mouth, and the mouth is pre-comped to two different mouths, which we will go over shortly. Uh, the body is the same thing. It's uh, one shape layer that I drew a whole bunch of different shapes in, and then has the texture over top of it. And um, everything is pretty much set up that way. <clears throat> It's just drawn with shape layers and After Effects, and uh, that's how I've gotten this guy to look so sloppy. Um, anyways, what we're going to want to do, once you have your character in here, you can do a stick figure, it doesn't really matter. Um, you're going to need to apparent or uh, make sure the anchor points are where they need to be. So basically your anchor points are going to be in places where he will need to be rotating, so uh, his head would rotate up and down like that, and that's where it would pivot. So you want to put your anchor point there and you can press Y on your keyboard to bring up your anchor point. Same thing for the left arm, left upper arm, left forearm, left hand, right hand, right forearm, right upper arm. His pelvis uh, will pivot right around there and his torso will pivot around his pelvis. Same for the legs, knees, and the feet. Now once you have all the anchor points where they need to be, you want to parent them accordingly. So we'll start with the head. The head needs to be parented to the body, and the body gets parented to the pelvis. And then his hand, his left hand, needs to be parented to his forearm, left forearm parented to his left upper arm, and the left upper arm parented to the body. So it's pretty intuitive. It's basically how you're connected yourself. Um, so the left foot to the left, whoops, left calf, left calf to the left thigh, the left thigh to the pelvis right foot to the right calf, right calf to the right thigh, right thigh to the pelvis, right hand to the forearm, right forearm to the right upper arm, right upper arm to the body. So now that everything is parented correctly, we can just check to make sure if we grab his pelvis here, that should move his whole body. And it does. So now we're going to go into our uh, Duic uh, when uh, expression if you can't see it just go to window bring up do it and There's a new option here, which is actually really nice. It's called auto rig So if we click that and if everything was labeled correctly, then we'd be able to see it um, I'll just go ahead and grab the left upper arm here uh, It would have put everything into this folder exactly how it is now He doesn't have a neck so we can leave that blank uh, but we've got a couple options here. IK on the body, which is inverse kinematics, which basically means this hand pushes this forearm to move this upper arm. Um, so that's how it kind of rotates. You'll see that in a second. IK on the neck, which we can, I'm going to check off because he doesn't have a neck. And then stretch, I'm also going to check off. If I had stretch on, if I moved his arm out, his, it'll separate from his body and it will try to stretch the IK. And FK over IK, I'll just leave that checked because it's um, <clears throat> I can have an option to un uncheck it. Now it's in French, um, that means cancel, so don't really pay attention to this. And we can just press OK and let the script do its work, and it's done. 
Um, so now if we move our guy, we can see that, you know, he's he's rigged pretty correctly. We're able to move him around. Now this arm is kind of bending the wrong way, but if we go into the IK orientation, we can just fix that for both the arms. Let's zoom in here. That's not what I want to do. And that one needs to be moved that way. So he's moving uh, pretty nice. His whole body is. His feet are moving up and down. And then we've got controls for his pelvis. Uh, we have two controls for his pelvis. One will make him bend like this, and the other will uh, actually move uh, the whole body, He'll move the arms as well. So one moves the hands, the other one doesn't. And then we have one for <clears throat> his head, which is just uh, rotation. And then uh, I'm not sure what this says. I think it says shoulders because it moves his shoulders, so he can do like a little, a little jig. Uh, so now all we got to do is uh, make him walk and we can do like a little walk cycle and like move him around and stuff um, and what you, you're going to want to do also is uh, to grab all of the pieces of his body and what I like to do is I just like to lock them and hide them all so you don't do what I just did and grab the wrong thing so just go in here and click the shy layer switch and click the shy layer switch and I'm going to rename this to shoulders, so I don't have to look at French or Dutch or whatever language that is. And uh, there we go. So now I don't have to worry about grabbing like the wrong part of his body. Um, so there's a couple other things that we can rig up. Um, so earlier um, I showed you he had two different mouths, so we can actually go ahead and rig that. So if we grab the, um, if we jump into the head comp, or the head pre comp, where the mouths are. We have a mouth comp here. And we just move this down to the bottom here and make it a little bit more room. And go into our master comp. So we've got our 40s cartoon guy. And create a new null object and move it or a different place. Uh, we could actually control, use this null object to control his mouth. So if I change the name of this, not just do C underscore mouths, so controller for the mouths to kind of keep it named the same way, and the position. Now the problem is the position of these two layers don't match. This is 870 and this is 2000 something. Uh, so if we go to our Duic toolbar and we press zero, that'll actually zero out the positions of each of these items, which is very handy and needs to be done. So now we can use the time of the mouth to associate with the position of this. So if we click on the mouth comp inside the head comp and do time, enable time remapping, we can parent the time remap to the position of this null object here, of the mouth controller. Now if we move it here, it's going to be very sensitive and it's not exactly, there's not much space in between each one to change. So if we just grab um, this time remap and divide it by a thousand, it'll actually be a little bit easier to manage. So there we go. We've got him smiling big, smiling not quite as big. And we can also do controllers for his eyes and eyebrows. So if I create two more null objects and let me just grab it and move it up here. And I'm going to duplicate that one and move it to the side. So this null object we use to control the pupils. So I'll do, oops, enter pupils. And this one will be the eyebrows. So it would make it controller eyebrows. And so we can go back to the head comp and we'll zero out both of these. And you can only use do zero out one at a time. So zero that one and zero that one. And it makes a new layer and parent it, parents it to it. It's some fancy mathematical expressions. I'm not really sure what they do. So, <clears throat> so we have the position and the rotation of the eyebrows and the position of the pupils. So if we go to these eyebrows here, and we control down the position, hold down shift and press the rotation, and do the same thing for the eyebrows, <clears throat> we can go ahead and parent them together after we zero them. We need to zero them as well. Can't forget that. So parent the position of the left eyebrow to the position of the eyebrow controller, the position of the right eyebrow 
to the position of the eyebrow controller and same for the rotation of each of these. All right, now if we go back into this master composition, 40s cartoon character, and we rotate these eyebrows, he, they're not actually gonna, the rotation is not actually gonna work. He's, it's, this, this one's not rotating correctly like our, our eyebrows do, unless you want him make, making that kind of look the whole time. So what we can do is we can go into the right eyebrow, so that's the one not rotating correctly, and to the rotation and multiply it times negative one, and that would essentially just um, reverse it so he's making uh, the different looks there. And they can go up and down as you please. And what we can do is we can do the same thing for the eyes. So let's make a little bit more room here. And we've got our eye comp here. And we can just zero that out and parent it to the position of the pupils, the pupil controller, and now you can move up and down. And you can also do the time remap that you did with the mouths to make him blink, or you can give him eyelids and make them blink as well using a, a mat as well. And that's pretty much it. So we have a uh, completely rigged up character that looks, you know, he's not perfect or anything, but he, he works. You know, he gets the job done. Um, you can do a walk cycle animation um, to make him move back and forth. And we'll go and do that now. So let's put him like this. And this arm should supposed to be right here. Rotate it up. And grab. Whoops. Keep clicking the wrong things. Right there. And rotate this foot here. And I'll show you how I like to do um, walk cycles. It's just the easiest for me. And rotate his head just a touch as well. So we're going to go ahead and uh, grab all of these, except for the master uh, null. Press the P, position, and rotation. And keyframe the rotation and a keyframe on the position of all of these. And then move forward about 30 frames or so and duplicate all of those keyframes. So what we have is we have over a little over a second of him not doing anything. And then we can go about halfway in, let me just zoom in here, halfway through the cycle and just reverse it. So we'll tilt his head down a little bit um, and move his foot, his foot back. Rotate and I'm just pressing V and W on the keyboard to give me different controls. I'm going to rotate that one. Move it up. And one thing you want to watch out for when you're doing these animations is don't um, try not to extend him out to the completely extended joint because that that will give you some weird um, looking animations that you, you might not want. Um, and we'll just grab this arm and move it up here and rotate it. I'm not sure why it's doing that. And same for this arm, move it back and down. I grab the wrong thing. And so now we've got him walking like this. Let's do a RAM preview real fast. You know, it doesn't look very good because it's not accurate. So we'll go to the middle here. So we've got this foot going up. So we'll move forward a little bit more. And so when you walk, your, this back foot's actually supposed to come up a little bit and rotate down. And this foot, um, let's see, it's going out. It's going to slide forward and still stay on the ground because he's walking forward. So we'll rotate that down a little bit as well. And I'm just going to do the feet first and then we'll do the rest of his body next. Um, and then this foot, this front foot here, should come up a little bit as he's walking and rotate down a little bit more. This back foot is starting to come back here and still going to be rotated just a touch. And then we're at the middle point. And so this foot, this front foot, should still be kind of around where it just was. 
this back foot needs to come up and rotate down keep moving forward this foot should rotate down a little bit this back foot should be up and rotated and then down it goes so now we've got it's not going to be perfect yet, but it's going to be better than it was. So we've got a little guy walking. That looks pretty good. And let's add a little bit of motion in his shoulders. So do position and rotation of that as well. And toward the middle here, we will just bring his shoulders down or move him up forward a little bit. And I'm just kind of guessing here. I'm grabbing the wrong thing. The problem is I'm grabbing uh, the, the little handles, and I'm not trying. I don't actually want to do that. Um, so now, <clears throat> as he walks, he's got a little bit more motion. And we want to make sure that each of these keyframes match perfectly. So that when we if we loop this, it'll match. And uh, so now we have a little dude walking around. His right arm, the back arm, is doing a little jig there that I don't actually want. So we can go down to the right hand and see where that's coming from. It's just how this is built. He needs to be moved down just a little bit more. I should fix it. No, I didn't. Made it worse. Anyway, sometimes you get these little weird errors here that you've got to... It's just the way that the, the rig works. You just need to come in and adjust it to make it um, do what you want it to do instead of looking so funky. Uh, so sometimes you have to go in and make these little micro adjustments um, to fix rigs that aren't perfect. Um, like this one, it's nowhere near perfect, so I'm trying to fix it myself. Hmm. Alrighty, so we've got a little 50, uh, 40s cartoon guy walking around. And uh, he doesn't look half bad. Now, we want to make his pelvis move a little bit as well. So we'll grab the second pelvis controller and we'll lock that. And uh, just basically, we're going to do uh, basically just repeat what we did. So we've already got some keyframes for him. We're going to move his pelvis up a little bit. Move to the middle here. And he's hitting the, the ground there. So we're going to kind of just move it down. Move it down and back. And there we go. You know, he doesn't look too bad. We got a couple of controllers for his eyes and his mouth. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, leave a comment below. I will have this guy up for download uh, for you guys if you want. And in the meantime, I'll see you soon. And uh, thanks for watching.